Berkeley Vest. So nice to see you in Houston. Uh, I'll say it's your comeback uh, since you left in New York. It's so good to connect with you again. Thank you. I want to talk about a controversial topic, but we'll do it concisely in a few minutes because it's re it comes up a lot, which is minimal residual disease or measurable residual disease, mm -hmm. MRD in AML. Um, I mean, where are we with this? Do we, um, how do you measure it? How do you really decide on MRD? And are we investigating whether MRD has clinical utility yet? Are we far away from there? I mean, where are we with MRD? Yeah, I think it's really controversial, but I think we are all moving towards uh, using that prognostically. So first of all, like measurements remain controversial because of complexity of EML. I think the flow cytometry is still the best standardized assay, but clearly sensitivity is not where we would like it to be, but uh, still I think it's the most uh, accepted uh, readout. With that said, it has to be done in a certified lab. Uh, centralized fashion so for example you know some of the MRD directed trials they want to do it in the, you know the labs like Logix or some other labs that FDA will accept uh, but I think the field is also moving towards molecular MRD and here there's a lot of discussion because they the value of MRD was shown with MP1, of course, as a marker by the British group uh, and also with co binding factor based on old studies and with APL, right? But for some of the other mutations for which we only have NGS, the sensitivity is usually only about 5%, and that's not where the MRD assay should be. So the new assays are coming into sort of at least uh, you know, preclinical, maybe clinical space as well, such as duplex, uh, PCR, much more sensitive NGS-based assay. And I think we are all we are kind of impressed by the results of the uh, MORPHO trial, the guilt treatment maintenance trial, post-transplant, uh, which was quote-unquote negative, uh, based on the p-value of slightly above 0.005. But then uh, uh, if you listen to the experts, they all say that the data show what it was supposed to show that patients with MRD positive disease, the drug was actually uh, providing the benefit. Um, and that's where the very sensitive assay was used uh, with the uh, sensitivity down to minus six based on NGS for FLIX3. And only because of that assay, we know that there's a value of using uh, guilt treating post-transplant patients who have MRD positive disease. So I think that's sort of a first example uh, of MRG utility. And also in the Quisatinib trial, 7 plus 3 plus Quisatinib trial, the MRG was also highly prognostic. And uh, I think, uh, again, using the same assay. So at least for one gene, uh, uh, after MP1, I would say number two, we have now clinical data where we can use it, uh, uh, for example, as far as thinking for patients for, you know, who should or should who should or should not undergo maintenance post-transplant, we know that if they are MRD positive pre-transplant, they should benefit from the guilt trip maintenance. Yeah, I always feel like MRD has the prognostic value. I think nobody will ever argue yes, that. Right. What people always argue, do I need to treat if continue therapy if yeah. MRD positive? Can I de-escalate therapy if MRD negative? That yeah. is that is what we want to know. Absolutely. So I think uh, <coughs> the problem is that we don't have MRD erasers, as we call, right? We don't have blinatumumab and AML, right? So even if we say the patient is MRD deposit, what are we going to do with that, right? right. So the right. only way is to uh, try to send patient for transplant. And then, you know, people say, oh, the outcomes of transplant are still inferior if they're MRD positive, but it's still better than with the conventional therapy. So I think the field is uh, kind of a little bit behind as far as the MRD behind ALL uh, because we don't have immune therapies that work in the MRD setting. But I personally remain positive because we have some of the new like NK engagers that are coming into play. You know, CD123 ADC is looking good. And some of these things I think will go into MRD setting. But at least for the TKI such as guilt, uh, guilt treatment, we have now the pr proof that MRD is actionable. So I think that's the first sort of step moving into sort of clinically oriented MRD assessment. Well, I appreciate and hopefully in the next meeting we'll have even more data on this. Absolutely. Truly appreciate yes. it. Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much. Thank you.